Hey guys, it's Peter Jordan here on the Lost Angler channel and today what we're going to be talking about is this, the hydrofoil. Um, you see it on a lot of smaller boats, sometimes you see it on some bigger boats. We're going to talk about why you use it, why you should use it, uh, what the benefits are, and what some of the downsides are. So hang tight and let's take a look at it. Okay guys, so the big purpose for hydrofoil is we're trying to make this more efficient at pushing this. Now this is a custom Ginu LT25 and the reason we put this hydrofoil on this boat is, is this one does not have a forward battery and the gas tank is in the rear. So all the weight in this boat is at the back of the boat. So to make it run efficiently, we had to help it. So what would happen is if you're running the boat like this one right here and all your weight is centered at the back of the boat, or if your load is uneven, let's say everybody wants to sit in the back of the boat, uh, what happens is you have to trim the motor all the way down to keep it from porpoising. And by porpoising, I mean the bow is riding up and down, 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 and on and on. You get the picture. So you have to push my trim my motor all the way down. And so doing what's happening is the motor is pushing its direction of thrust from the prop is pushing it down which is pushing the bow down so in order to get it to ride level I'm having to push that thrust downward instead of being able to push it back when I'm having to push my thrust downward instead of pushing it back it's making my engine much less efficient and also it's a lot more sensitive to trim so if I trim it up just a little bit too much and I don't have a way to correct it what happens is I start bouncing around so that takes a lot of the efficiency out of my motor takes a lot of the speed out of my boat and it also makes for you know kind of a less than enjoyable day on the water so hydrofoil fix the problems with this boat and we'll talk about why okay so let's bring things back up so if you'll notice a hydrofoil is shaped just like an airplane's wing it even has a little bit of a curvature pushing downward. So what happens is the bottom of the hydrofoil is like this and the top is like this. And what this does is it creates an area of uneven pressure. I've got high pressure here and low pressure here. And what it's doing is it's taking this and pushing up on it from back here. So what's happening, just like an airplane wing, it's creating lift. So when we're running our boat, when we've got our hydrofoil on it, we essentially have a small airplane wing on the back. This allows us to trim our motor to be level or more level, depending on how severe the problem is. And so it makes it much more efficient. When I can trim my motor to be level because the, the hydrofoil is pushing up on it, creating lift, it allows me to take my direction of pressure, push it straight back. So now I'm spending all of the energy of this motor not trying to push the bow down, but trying to push the boat forward. Now, what's the downside of a hydrofoil? The downside is I'm making my surface area in the water larger. So what's happening is I'm creating more resistance. If you have a boat that trims out perfectly, that does everything it needs to exactly the way it's supposed to, it will slow down your boat. Not a whole lot, but it will still slow it down. In that case, so let's say you've got a boat that runs perfectly 50 miles an hour. It's at a perfect trim. Everything's moving exactly like it should. If I add a hydrofoil to it, what's going to happen is I'm going to, uh, I'm going to lose some of the efficiency moving forward. Now I'm going to get on plane faster. My whole shot's going to be better, but the downside of that is I'm going to lose some top end. Now on this boat, because I was never able to trim it up completely, I didn't lose top end, I gained top end. Another thing that makes a hydrofoil really nice is be, when I'm running, it's pushing the water to the prop. So I'm actually getting more water flow to the prop, making it more efficient. So like I said, there are ups and downs of each one, but eventually you're going to get to kind of a terminal velocity where the amount of water flow you're getting there, that benefit is overcome by the amount of drag and resistance the hydrofoil has in the water. So there's ups and downs of every one of them. Now, we've talked about previously uh, self-leveling trim tabs, and on smaller boats like this one, if I was to put trim tabs on this boat, I wouldn't have a place to put a transducer. Another problem is, too, if I'm in a super skinny, shallow running boat, trim tabs, especially self-leveling, are always down. So that also cuts down on my draft. So for this boat, hydrofoil, 
was the right answer. Uh, this particular one is the Stingray Junior. There's plenty of them on the market. Uh, check out, see which one's right for you. And I hope this helps. We'll see you on the water.